You're looking at a bandsaw. It's a three-wheel bandsaw, a 12-inch, and this is a bandsaw I've actually had since I was very, very young. I was probably in my early 20s when I got this. Not that I'm, you know, old or anything, but uh, <laughs> it's been a few years. Anyhow, um, you buy things when you're younger on budgets, and this was kind of a, a budget saw, although it does have some neat features, and I'll go over that. But right now, I'm just wanting to get this back in circulation so I can use it still. You know, here it is. It's been, really, it's been like 20 years. It's probably been 25 years. But I still have it, and it's still in really good shape. It's just dirty. Um, I pulled it out of one of my garages that I had, a little storage unit, and I think it's time that this thing gets back into doing stuff. So one of the things that that is kind of neat about this this particular saw is it comes with a miter gauge. There's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of saws come with a miter gauge. Saws, band saws, table saws, they come with it. It's basically a tool to help you cut things at angles. You can see all the different angle. Um, indications right here and normally it would ride along these tracks and this this particular model you know has a track here got track here and one going across here so what you would do is you know put it in the track here and whatever piece of wood you were working on see if I can grab something um, let's say like you wanted to to send this through you would simply you know, put it on this and slide it through and it cut it straight. Or it cut it whatever angle you had this set. So, one of the other things that this one that has that's pretty interesting is that it has it to where you can put it in this track and it acts like a fence. And for those that don't know what a fence is, is basically a guide. So, if you needed to cut you know, a piece of wood and you wanted exactly, I don't know, like an inch. I'm just eyeballing this. If if you had a, you take your, your, your tape measure, which I've only got um, ruler here, you'd basically just, you know, put this up against there and go, okay, you know, I'm going to take this much off. And be aware that this is not accurate because this ruler has a little bit at the end there, if you see that. Um, that doesn't count towards that one inch mark that I'm sitting on. Anyhow, so you would measure out what you needed and move the fence in. And this comes with a little screw right here, which is amazing that I still have it. But it would go into any of these holes right here. And that is for setting this as a fence. So you just put it in there. And... Uh, Put your screw into the hole, tighten it down, just pretend that's in there. You tighten this down and it would lock this in, hey, actually got it in there, thanks. Uh, <laughs> little things. Um, anyway, so, so you, you would tighten this down and wherever this is at, you, know, you would move it forward or whatever. Get your measurement, lock it in, cut your wood through there, and that's how that worked. So this particular saw, has three wheels. You'll see some of most most of them are two wheels. And when we say wheels, we talk about the wheels that are behind here. Let's go ahead and start pulling these knobs off. Okay, there's one underneath here. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about this little guy here. One of the really neat things about this particular saw is it has a variable speed, meaning that it will adjust however fast I want that that blade to spin, which is nice because depending on what type of wood you're cutting, or even if you put a metal blade in here, because I believe this particular model came with two blades. One was a wood blade and one was a metal blade. And believe it or not, that would be the one it came with. I never changed this out because I was a kid and I hardly used these things. You know, you don't know, you know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing when you're a kid. You just buy things. I think I think I was making like, um, back then we were doing like RC planes, so I think I was using this to trim some boss of wood to make wings or something. I don't know. It's been a long time. Anyways, let's keep going with taking these off. And I even, even put a designated Allen key in here to adjust the tension on this guy. 
All right, and I believe that is all of them. So we just take this face plate off and set it down here. All right, so you can see here, here are the wheels we were talking about. So you got one there, one down there, and one over here. And as you can see, a ton of dust. I really need to, to clean this. I'm going to take this out and clean this whole thing. But just like their, their two-wheel counterparts, which are much bigger, they still have the tires, like every other bandsaw. This is the adjuster. Of course, it's on, we're looking on the back side of it. This is the blade guard. And a lot of them will have a measurement, like right here, the, that'll let you know how far you're... you're putting this down and the adjustment for this is simply on the back here and you just adjust it up and down and for those that don't know what that does is so if you look there are a couple bearings on this one some of them have guide blocks which is basically just some steel that holds it in there and there's a bearing back there that get in here if you can see it there are two bearings one here one here Okay, apparently I found how you turn off the recording when you press the buttons on your phone. Anyhow, so back to what I was saying, there's two bearings. There's one here. What's well, to me? All right, so what I was saying is there's three bearings. There's one here, there's one here, and if you look right back there, there's another one. And that one holds the tension on the blade, so when you push against it, it keeps it centered. Or rather, it keeps it from, you know... From backing out it keeps pressure against the the, the material you're, you're cutting down here and these are just to keep that blade from varying left and right because when you're cutting this blade has an, has the ability to flex and you can see the closer you have this to your your material that you're cutting we're not that close but there we go so if you're cutting some real thin stuff here it has a harder time to flex because there is another set underneath here, which is behind this guide, excuse me, this, this uh, shield here. It protects us so that we won't get, you know, we're not supposed to be cutting ourselves with this thing. Um, so right behind here, there's another set of those same bearings that provide the other, the other point of, of pressure. So it keeps that blade from here to up here it keeps that blade really, really straight. So when you're cutting, you don't end up with weird cuts. That's what that does. All right, so what we have here, we have the motor that drives the saw. And what it does is it has a band here. It's a, a belt that acts like the tire for this particular wheel. And this will power the wheel so it turns the blade. And you get some cutting action up there. And like I said, this, this saw really doesn't need much other than cleaning up. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to come in here and do a lot of cleaning because this sawdust is caked on because it's been in here for, like I said, 20 some odd years. I used the saw very little and I didn't clean it because I was young and dumb. <laughs> and didn't take care of tools like my dad told me to. So now I'm reaping the rewards of that um, mistreatment of these tools. You should always take care of your tools. So, I mean, look at this. This is, this is nuts. This stuff is so caked on. Oof. It's a dust, dust ball here. All right, so... I'm going to go through here and clean all this and get it all cleaned up and I'll, I will cut back once I'm done with that. And I'm also going to take care of this table. The surface of this is really, really, really rough. And one of the things you don't want is to have your material that you're cutting to go across this because this will gouge wood. It's, I mean, it's, it's really actually it has some sharp spots and that you know it's central machinery i mean this is a harbor freight from 20 like five years ago so if you imagine the quality of harbor freight now is bad 20 you know 25 years ago it was horrible compared to today i mean it was still pretty good but you know everything was wasn't as good as it is today as far as manufacturing techniques
Um, so I'm going to clean all this up and I will sand this bed. In fact, I might, I'm just going to go ahead and sand the bed first because it's going to make a mess. So the way we do that to get this bed off here, because it is detachable, and one of the other things I'm going to going to fix is this is wobbly and it has some feet down here, and you can see there are some screws. I'm going to see if I can do some adjustment, and it might take some shimming. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at it. And uh, see, apparently I was cutting uh, acrylic. It's still here 25 years later. Lovely. Okay, going back to this. All right, so I spun this over so you can see that there are some adjustments down here. And if you look, let's see if I can get close. There we go. There are, focus, there we go. There are adjustments here, angle adjustments. And there's a guide here that says, you know, okay, right now this, this table is at this setting, which actually normally you would, so you loosen these up and you would slide this until that zero was right matched up with this indicator. It's not, but it's all gummed up. I'm gonna have to take all this off and clean it. But that's how you would adjust it. So if you wanted to put some sort of, you know, beveled edge on what you're, you're cutting, you loosen those up, you set the angle, and then you, you lock these two down. All right, forgive me for this crazy way of doing this, but I'm filming this with one hand and we're gonna need to adjust this up so you can actually get some material to go in there. But now, if you were to run material through, you would get a beveled, a beveled edge, as you can see there. So it's actually a pretty, a pretty neat saw to have. And that's why I'm going to do a restoration on this guy. Well, when I say restoration, not really, you know, a full blown out, I'm not gonna replace bearings, because like I said, these bearings on this thing are not very, I mean, not very, they're, they're old, but they're not worn. You know, they have very little use on it. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so one of the things I want to go ahead and do, I want to get this blade out of here because I do want to clean everything and readjust. So we're going to take, this is a, this, this screw here is a table alignment screw. And basically what it does is it aligns this side to this side. You wouldn't think that there would be a problem and issue with that, but if you look close, I mean, even with one hand, I can move this slightly. So it's just to, to lock it all back together, make it more sturdy, because any little variation, there you go, see, now you can see, there we go. So any, any variation, you're putting pressure on things, and if you're putting a piece of wood through here across that, it may tilt your wood and you get a bad cut. So you're going to want to keep this in there. All right. So first thing we're going to do is release the tension. So you can see now there's no tension on this guy. And we're going to have to take this plate off here so I can get it out of there. Okay. So we're just going to... that and that one Oops. all right and, and there we go we can get a better look at what I was talking about so basically this is the carrier, the, the bearing carrier that I was telling you, you know, about the third bearing right there. So that's the one that keeps tension up against the blade, the back of the blade. And you can adjust that by moving this in and out and also by here. So it's a two, two um, bolts, that, well, two nuts that you've got to loosen up. And then you basically will adjust it through these two right here to move this closer to the blade to get the blade to sit right in between these two bearings and up against that one. All right, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and we got to take this piece out here, this other guide. And the way you do that is just by loosening this all the way to the bottom. And we keep taking it out until comes out.
All right, so with that out of the way, back there. So now we're gonna come down here and we've gotta remove this one right here. So we've got a secondary and that we're gonna remove. It's a, just a guard. Yeah, this is not the easiest saw to change out blades. I'm almost regretting doing this, but this thing needs to be gone through. Um, anything that's sat this long, it's it's best to go ahead and and go through it. And like I said, you can see the stuff I was working on 25 years ago. Yeah. All right. Oh, and there you go. You can see the bearings in there. So basically, the same thing is up top, just backwards. So the the bearings are upside down in here. Right, we can get this blade out now. And as you can see, it comes right through there. And now the blade is out. And this is when you can really spin the bearings and listen to see if there's any any play. And like I say, this is it's quiet. All right, so now that I've plugged it in, we can turn this on, and this has a safety on it. If you look right here, this is so that you know people like me don't turn this on with the blade still on it, with the cover off, so it's just a little protection, but we're just gonna go ahead and... All right, that sounds how it's supposed to. So what I was saying before is this is a variable one, so if we were to turn this on... All right, so that's how that works. So let me get this taken care of so get all these parts off because I am going to go ahead and sand this tabletop so it's smooth and then once I have that all sanded I can start to clean it up okay so I've got my orbital sander I put a 60 grit and this is actually one I used on a another project so it's got a little bit of uh, wear on it but I think it's enough left there to still do some some good in this one and we actually want to pull the insert out so I don't go messing that up because 60 grit on plastic inserts, no good, no bueno. All right, so here we go. Actually.
had to adjust that so I can get into that spot that I was missing before. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and dust everything off, clean it all off. You know, um, it's like I say, it's really just, it's just dirty. And I'm going to take care of that and I'll be back. All right. I'm just going to, before I go in and clean everything up, I'm just going to show you how that adjuster and everything looked like the bearing adjuster in there. And um, man, this particular bearing is jammed. There's too much debris in there for it to roll. So that was probably an issue that I was having. I just didn't know it because, like I said, young and dumb. But um, we're going to clean all this out and then go from there. All right. All right, so here's a, a fun little thing I just learned. This is the lower bearing assembly. And remember how I thought that the wood had froze this bearing up right here it's actually not the wood that did it. if you look really close it's actually sitting on the metal so manufacturer defect i'm going it's very disappointing i'm going to have to see what i can do about raising this up to get that off of there and we will continue on i've cleaned everything and now i'm just uh going through the inspection and then the reassembly so see i've wiped everything down with a a damp cloth to get some of this out of here. Um, then you're gonna, I'm going to spray it all down with some some WD-40 to get any of that water that may have uh, been left there. In case people didn't know, WD-40 is water displacement. So WD, the more you know. All right. All right. So what I've done is release that. Uh, took that nut, nut off the back, and. No matter what I do, when you pull it tight, that's going to sit there. And I believe it's just a manufacturer's defect. If you look at the angle of that metal, it just, I don't think they they manufactured this right. I think there's a little bit, that should have been underneath that bar there. So this one right here should be underneath this one here instead of on the side of it. Because it's got an angle that puts it going into the metal. So what I'm going to do is basically just flip it over and then put it back. Because if you flip it over, it has a little bar there that will keep it from riding on that metal. And it will still align. That's, that's not an issue. You know, if we had a clearance issue or something where these bearings would, would hit, I couldn't do that. But there's plenty of, of space underneath there. So that's what I'm going to do to fix that. All right, so moving on. All right, so the way I'm gonna fix my issue is by flipping it over. It has this bar underneath there. It's a more metal for it to keep it off that. And there is an adjustment in the back that allows me to slide it over and center it over that bearing so that that blade will ride on that bearing and go in between those two. So that will fix that situation. All right, let me lock it down and move on to the next part. All right, so I've gone ahead and, and put the feet back on, and I adjusted it so it has no wobble now, which is going to be real nice. All right, so next I'm going to put back the different wheels that go here, and I will adjust the, the belt that goes on this guy here, and I'll show you how to do that. So, all right, on to the next. All right, so we're going to start with putting the drive belt wheel back on, and basically it's, you know, insert it in there and take the nut and the nut goes on the back side right there all 
All right, and the way you tighten this, if you look really close, right in the middle of this bearing, that is a screwdriver slot. So you will take a big flat head and put it right there. And at the same time, with two hands, which I can't do because I'm holding this camera, <laughs> um, you tighten the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and install all of the, the wheels this way and we'll go on to the next step after that. All right, since we weren't able to do this with the drive belt installed on this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that there's no problems with this bearing, you can listen to it. So. And that's fine, it sounds fine. All right, so moving on to the next one. Okay, so I got the second one installed and I'm gonna show you how to put the the third one in here because it's a little, tr a little different. It might be a little tricky for some people because the adjuster is on here. So what you're gonna do is take this Allen head bolt here, socket cap, and take that out of it. And then you're just gonna put this in the slot there. And then from the back side, you're going to put that that knob into it. So again, I will have to pause this while I sit down the camera and do that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and installed the knob, and I kept it loose because you're going to have to go up there and put this in here. And you can see I, I even marked it. My young self at least knew to do that. Anytime you have a, a thing that requires a tool, just go ahead and mark it. Um, all right, so... Put that in there, and I think I'm gonna have to set the camera down again because I got to get this line. Basically, I'm lining up that bolt into the slot that goes in the threaded slot that goes right there. So, we'll be right back. All right, so that is now in there. You can see that it all can slide because you're gonna need to adjust that and keep it loose enough so it does move up and down with this knob in the back. All right, good. All right, so the next step is we're going to have to go ahead and get that belt put on. So, be right back. Let me grab the belt. Okay, so the next step, we need to put this belt back on this, this wheel here. And we need to adjust the tensioner on this. So, the, the way that this tensioner works is basically there's a spring behind here. And this is on that spring so you're gonna need to wind it all the way up here so it's over the belt so it puts tension on it so again this is gonna be I'm gonna have to put the camera down and put this belt on all right be right back all right so one of the things I found was that this this is a bushing it's a it's kind of like a a cheaper version of a bearing and it went on the shaft right here but it didn't want to spin now some bushings don't but this one was meant to be a spinning one and if you were to feel that there's a lot of old grease on this it's dried up grease so what I did is I went ahead and removed the clip and the washer the washer there we go the washer that that was on this and removed this bushing and I'm going to clean it out clean this and put more grease on this so it spins freely because it was binding up on this and what that'll do is that will cause more wear and tear and this will heat up and eventually it'll lock up or it'll wear this out it'll wear it oblong and then you'll just have issues and You'll be going through belts because this will lock up and it'll start eating up belts. So you want to make sure that this is well lubed and you don't have any issues with this. Now for some reason yours was worn out and you can even see some of the, the mileage it's put on. The re reason why this has the difference in, you know, you can see that this has a wear mark is because when this was drying up, I was still using this saw so this was it had resistance it would still rotate but it had resistance so it caused some wear on there and it's not enough wear like if you take your fingernail and go across it it's not enough wear there to be concerned about it luckily um i didn't keep using this very long so i'm going to clean this up and clean this out 
and then lube everything back up put that washer and there's a clip that goes right on there in that little groove there i'm going to put that back on and then we'll go ahead and i'll show you how to tighten and adjust this belt all right on to the next one next step okay so what am i going to lube that little bushing up with you're just looking for any type of grease that's made for temperature and i do a lot of working on vehicles so i had this laying around multi-purpose grease it's for brake, wheel bearings, steering linkage, chassis suspension, universal joints. Basically a high temp grease because that will spin and it will get hot. So you don't want grease that's going to melt and drip out. So, you know, don't go put stuff like Vaseline in there. I mean, I've, I've seen people do that. It's, it's a thing. <laughs> so use some high temp, high temp grease. And don't use cooking grease. Again, I, I had to have to explain this to people, I feel kind of... Yeah, just use stuff that's made for it. I'll put a link, like everything else. <laughs> I'll put a link into some stuff that um, I think might actually be a little bit better than this, but it'll be in the in the description. On to the next part. All right, so adding that grease on there, you can see now it spins, which is the way it should. It shouldn't bind up. So now I'm going to add the washer and the clip, and I'll be right back. All right, so in usual fashion, um, I went ahead and messed this up if you can see there you go this is the the snap ring that holds on that that particular washer right there and i messed it up trying to get in and off kind of tweaked it there and you can see that let me put it on there see tweaked but luckily i have a whole case of them and again in the description down below um i will put that because i have a new one and you see that one, it's just like that one, just not messed up. So we'll take the good one and put that on there. All right, let's do this again. Be right back. All right, it is on there. So that will not come off. Let's see. Yep, it's in there. All right, so now we just have to put this on here and adjust this. No. All right, so I tried, and I tried, and I could not get this on one hand. You need two hands to do this, but that is how it's done. And see now, you can see that bushing really moves around when before it didn't. So there we go. That is all you have to do to adjust this. This is a self-tensioner, so it will keep pressure on this belt. It won't slip, so that is set up, and now we'll go on to putting the blade on. All right, so I went ahead and put this on loosely. As you can see, there's no tension on it. I put it in the belt right about in the center. Um, usually there'll be a wear mark if you're putting on, you know, if you're not putting new tires on here, there'll be a wear mark. You can just kind of line it up there. All right, so I have to point out that the teeth are facing me and you can see that they are cutting down. This is the correct way to put this blade on. Don't go that way. Don't have the teeth going the opposite direction. They should be pointing down and pointing towards you because this is the way the wood will go through it or whatever material you're going to be using, but it'll slide through this way. All right, so now I need to do the adjustment, which is on top. So I grab the Allen key and just put that in there. And as you see, when I start to crank up on it, It's taking that tension out and good little thumb it's just to get it there where it's all right. So in the back here, this was your adjustment there and you're going to tighten it down. All right. And then you need to test it. And you don't test this by turning it on. I've I've seen people do this and it's it's ridiculous. They'll put it, they'll put the case back together, they'll turn it on, and then they'll hear this god-awful noise because the belt slipped off and is now attacking their case. So you're gonna rotate it by hand, and what you're looking for is you want to make sure that this blade is not slipping off, it's not moving direction to one side or the other. It should be pretty centered. So as you go, 
it'll center itself. If you have a little bit off, you know, on one of the wheels, it'll usually center itself. Alrighty. And what you're hearing, you're hearing the belt, the belt slip. If you look, and that, that's that's pretty normal because it's not under power. You're sliding it through there, so there's there's some slack. When it gets under power, it'll pull that tension, and you won't have that slippage. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the lower bearing assembly on first, just because it's easy to get to without the table being there. And now you can see what I was talking about: how the blade goes in between these two bearings here and then it rides on the one back in there. All right, so if you look, we've got to get these two ride on it. So we get the, the back one to ride on the blade. And if you look up in there, it's not. So just by keeping this loose, you can adjust this whole thing. All right, so I've gone ahead and adjusted it. And what you want to be looking for is you want to make sure that when you spin this, that both those bearings are are moving and the bottom one will be too although on this model it's not that prominent as most of the others I mean it's it's in there it's spinning and unfortunately the adjuster on here there's not an adjuster to push out to put pressure on it so you're just going to want to pull it with your finger as hard as you can well not as hard as you can pull it till, it till it touches the blade and then you need um, two 10 millimeter wrenches to hold that one in and then lock this one in. But this one is done and I'm gonna to move to the upper now. All right, so that is all hooked up and ready to go. As you can see, uh, you can... All right, so I'm gonna put the table on next and then put the faceplate on and that'll buckle it up and that'll be done with this one. So let me get uh, get started with that. All right, so I've gone ahead and put that back on. I put the insert in and now I just need to put this screw back in here to tie the table back together. go grab the face plate put that on all right I'm just putting this face plate back on you always put these on loose don't tighten them up until you get them all on otherwise you may have a little bit of a line problem here. And then once you get them all in, you're going to go back and just snug them. You don't have to, you don't have to torque these things down too bad because you'll you'll bend the faceplate if you do. Just get it to where it's snug. That one and last one. All right, so. Okay, so one thing I forgot to do was to put this little this little shield here back on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It goes right there just to cover up all these bearings and such. All right, that's back in place. Now we'll move on to the next thing. The last thing I wanted to do is make sure that this this miter gauge moves smoothly in here and that's one thing I noticed before is it really gets hung up on just this outer one so in the inner one the inner one it moves, uh, it doesn't sound terrible it does move pretty 
pretty good. But in this one, it really gets hung up. So that's telling me that this particular channel needs to be filed a little bit. All right, what I wanted to show you guys is what I'm doing here is I'm actually, there's a lot of paint down in this channel here, and I'm just removing the paint. That's what, that's what's the, it's catching it. So once I get all this paint removed off of here, it should be fine. They just, they've really coated this one. I mean, you can, you can see how thick the paint is by how uneven it is there. So they put a lot of paint on this thing. So I'm going to get the paint off this. It should slide much better after that. Alrighty, so it turns out that it was just the paint that was holding that up, so I used a wire wheel with my drill and cleaned all that out. And now you can see, and nice and easy now. And that's what you want. You want to be able to use these channels. So I'm going to have to do the same to this channel, so as you can see. Uh, yeah. So I will go and do the same thing to these other channels, and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, so I have gone ahead and cleaned out all of these T-tracks here. And like I said, it, there was just a lot of paint that was built up on the edges, but now that is done. That one is done. And the fence track is also done. And the fence track you don't want to worry about too much because you're just going to be bolting it in there and locking it down with this little screw. So that is it. This saw is now up and running. And that is the end of this episode. And I'll see what I've got else laying around that I can get going. And see you next time. Bye.